To begin getting into some shenanigans with my girl Jamie Lynn on the co host mic. We are back, just the two of us. So happy to be here. It's yeah, like old times. I know, right? Yes, we're in our favorite studio at Dear Media. This is the one where I just feel like we're here for business, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the whole couch situation yeah. for podcasting. I know a lot of podcasters like to do that. It creates, I guess, a comfortable atmosphere maybe for the guests, but you and I don't yeah. really need that. No, but then on camera, it's like, I don't like it's the just camera awkward. Angles. I agree. Yeah, so we've got our desk, we've got our mics. I'm a headphone girl. Jamie is not. Never. We have so much to get into this week. So the last time I was in studio was almost 10 days ago, I think, and a lot has transpired every minute since something then. is transpiring constantly my eyes are blurry i'm i think i have permanent vision damage from being on my phone Oof. so much the past week or so it's been a, a lot to say the least um there's a lot <laughs> we want to get into so i feel like should we maybe do a little would you rather game that i posted for first just to I mean, have a little can, fun? We can, but you're going to piss everybody off to do the game first. Why? Because <laughs> they have to keep listening for the tea? <laughs> I yeah. think let's start with the game. Whatever. And then yes, whatever you want. We've got a lot to discuss. I saw your podcast, Jamie All Over, made so many headlines this week from your episode with Kale. I want to get into some of that. But I did ask for suggestions on if Jamie and I were to do a podcast and not speak about any current events, what do you guys want to hear? And someone suggested a would you rather game. So I think let's do five would you rathers. Let's ease our way into Ease this our way condo? into the sure. shenanigans because sure. we've got a lot. We're going to piss everyone off, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. Yes. Actually, I don't like this one, but I'm going to ask anyway. Okay. Would you rather eat Taco Bell or McDonald's for a month straight? Taco Bell, for sure. There's way more items I would eat from there. I'm not going to eat chicken nuggets every day. Have you seen Super Size Me where he actually ate McDonald's for a month straight to see what would happen to his body? No, but I did hear about a guy who ate Taco Bell for a month oh. straight, and he actually lost weight. <laughs> Good for him. Good. Well, he's probably pooping it all out. Yeah, <laughs> <all> right? <laughs> My answer is neither, but I'll go with sugar taco, even though that wasn't an option. Yeah, I would definitely choose that over any. Would you rather live in the 1920s or the 1970s? Ooh, I feel like I'm more of a 1970s girl. That's like, you know, Woodstock, rock bands. The 70s is probably my favorite decade of music, so I think... I would be 70s. What about you? That is so your vibe. The it is. only vibe about the 70s that I can relate to is the whole like hippie, yeah. you know, like maybe the vegan movement kind of, you know, eating healthy back then. Yeah. But I would so love to be in the 1920s. That movie Midnight in Paris where he actually travels oh, back to the 20s. I haven't seen that. I you, want to. That's one of my favorite movies. It's yeah. so good. And what's so cool about it is there's actual like historical figures in the movie. So he's meeting like Gertrude Stein, he's meeting oh. um, Ernest Hemingway, just Picasso I think is in it. So it's just so cool. But yeah, yeah. I would love Paris in the 20s. That's my dream. Oh my God, I love that. I have a good one. Would you, speaking of time travel, would you rather travel to meet your past self or your future self? That's a really, really hard one because I can debate both sides of the argument. Yeah past because I you know I was actually thinking about this recently our our most fun like times where we felt like like that feeling of home and family you know like mm -hmm. for me that was as added as a child around like the holidays with a lot of my family members who are no longer here so just something like if I could go back to that that would be really cool yeah I think I would definitely go back as well I would go back to probably 1997 and tell my 12 year old self you got this. It's going to be okay. 
Because I got to say, watching back a lot of these home movies mm -hmm. that my mom just got put onto digital copies mm -hmm. is really hard. Seeing how at like age 11, I was so happy. And then at 12, it was just like, like lights on no one home. Like Aww. it's really, watching these back has been hard. And I feel like that's why also this season, you are seeing me stand up more to Katie because of that bully aspect. Yeah. But now, especially after watching this week's episode, I had a little piece of my heartbreak for her because I'm like, she was going through a divorce and a heartbreak. And as much as she came on so strong that I'm happy, I'm great, I am living my best life. I took that very literal from one conversation, mm -hmm. and I would say that's one of my regrets this season, and I will have an apology for her at the reunion next week because watching it back, it was very easy for my anxious attachment style to retract from that friendship when I wasn't getting responses via text. You know, I would ask her, do you need help moving boxes? Can Brock and I do anything? And when I get so many unanswered texts, I get in my head and I'm like, okay, she's fine. Guess she doesn't need anything. You know, Tom needs something, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna be there for Schwartz. But watching it back, especially this episode when they're in Havasu and just seeing how actually hurt she was going through it, I felt really bad that I wasn't there more. That's actually a really interesting aspect of your show because you can now gain this new perspective that most people don't have that opportunity to do. You know? Literally, I said this to her when I saw her at Ocean's birthday party. I'm like, obviously, we still have the reunion. I'm gonna say all of this to you on camera. I just want you to know that me watching that back, there's nothing normal about this. No one gets to go back in time mm -hmm. and watch someone else's perspective of a situation. You can hear three sides of a story. Yeah. You know, I could have heard Lala, Christina Kelly, Charlie, Katie, and everyone's point of view. But watching it back, I felt like I was given a very different version of how that trip went down. I was too. And I, watching it back as well, I was like, wait a minute. I thought they were bullying you. I thought you felt this certain way. And then I'm watching it back and I was like, wait, it's not how she portrayed it at all to us. No, I now see that the story Lala told me was very much how that girl's trip went down. And it just, it, it's exactly that. It's a trip. To watch it back, I have to tell you, because I mean, we watched the episode together this week. Yeah. This was next to my divorce, but I think more because I saw the divorce coming. I wanted the divorce at the time. I knew that was what was right. And there were so many things that ultimately led to the divorce. This, such a mind fuck. And literally watching this episode back has been the most challenging in 10 years. I'm shocked that you say that because like you said, I watched it with you and I'm, I would, I'm curious to know exactly why and what in particular about the episode got to you because for me, it wasn't until the end. If you recall, that's when I put like my hands over my mouth or my mm -hmm. eyes and I'm just like, oh my God. Because the end is like when you realize it's gonna pick up. Yeah, because the end is a to be continued. Yeah. And then I realized, well, the reunion's next week. We're gonna get all of the episodes in the next week, so. It's just, yeah, I mean, a mind fuck is putting it mildly. I don't even know how to explain what a trip that was watching back, seeing the other side. Okay, that's that's what I was... Yeah. Okay, so not seen, necessarily seeing this secret thing develop well, yet. That too. That too. That but too. A, a little bit, but I get it now. So more seeing a different perspective from the other 100%. side. 100%. I also am very glad that Andy Cohen came out on his radio show this week and said that the fans are going to think this episode was re-edited and recut and this was put in that wasn't originally in. And just to say here on Shenanigans as well, that is not true. This was the story that was happening no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a story that I was trying to shut down because... 
Ugh. Okay. Two more would you rather's and then we Okay. Real, have real quick lot though on that last into. thing about how you get to see someone else's perspective. Mm-hmm. I've heard this and read this that when we die, we have a life review and yeah. you can see how you've made every single person feel in your life in that life review. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I mean, crazy. obviously, none of us know if that's real right. or not. Who's coming back and saying this? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, tap into those psychic <laughs> abilities, Jamie. We need to know. <laughs> this one I thought was interesting. Teresa underscore Rose gave us, would you rather go back 10 months ago with the knowledge you know now mm-hmm. or see 10 minutes into the future or 10 minutes of the future? I'm going back 10 months. <laughs> I'll see the future and just try to figure out the crypto situation and then come back and <laughs> make us all be able to buy islands or something yeah. and take care of okay. people who need to be taken care of. Yes. All right. This one's from Mariah underscore Bev. Would you rather marry the person you lost your virginity to or work your first job forever? <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> What's your answer? I will go back to Marie Calendars all day long. I would have owned that <laughs> restaurant by now, work my way up from a hostess, you know? But yeah, I would rather have that potato cheese soup forever than be married to my high school boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a reason we're no, not together I, anymore. I agree. I will work in B&W Bakery in Hackensack, New Jersey on yes. Main Street. Shout out to your coffee cake. <laughs> <laughs> I will work there forever. Yeah. All right, we'll get back into some shenanigans because I know that's why you guys are all here to listen. But before we do, this one question that we got was about nutrition from Margie underscore Franceschi and wants to know, what do I eat? Do I do meal delivery service? And what is a typical day of food? So we're going to take a break to tell you exactly what that is because all i have been eating lately are these factor meals i posted them on my instagram this week i'm posting it again today there is a code team ariana 50 listen to the ad and you'll get all the deets all right so i have not had much of an appetite lately but legit you guys these keeping me going my factor meals you open it up and literally two minutes you just poke some holes, chuck it in the microwave, two minutes, it's done. I don't feel like grocery shopping lately. Mama has been stressed out. Factor meals have helped make eating fun and easy. Enjoy. All right, so that is what I have been eating. So easy to just two minutes ready to go. But Jamie, let's talk about your podcast that you put out this week that I've seen making headlines. You sat down with Kale, who is a close friend of both of ours, Mm -hmm. but also other people in this friend group. So I don't want to say everything on shenanigans because I want you to get the downloads. I want people to go and actually (laughs) listen to the full episode. But can you break down sort of what you guys discussed and what the shenanigans listeners will hear when they go listen to your episode. I can, and I've been just getting things sent to me where it's been reposted. The craziest one was Us Weekly. Yeah, I saw that. Right? That's insane. But, I mean, you'll get so much out of this episode. Funny enough, it we recorded for about an hour and a half, mm-hmm. and the episode is, I think, 39 minutes. Mm. So I did take a lot out. <laughs> And, you know, normally I like to get my episodes under an hour regardless. People have, you know, short attention spans. Right. So I just took out a bunch of stuff where I was just like getting to the point of everything, you Mm -hmm. know. But then after that, I had to take out more stuff. So it did whittle down to 39 minutes. And what I'm getting a lot of now is, oh, we wish you kept talking. We wish it went longer. So I have a lot of scrapped, you know, stuff from the podcast. I may see if I can make a cohesive bonus episode out of it okay but really what i gave and what kale gave in this episode was stuff that he and i both have been wanting to get off our chests specifically for me it was two things it came down to two things so there were some other podcasters out there saying that we all knew in advance of this situation or that it's you know production is in on it everyone's in on it everything that everybody is posting in social is all planned like no one could mastermind this there's absolutely no way But the fact that 
they started thinking this based on one of my stories. I was like, wait, no, I need to set the record straight because there's other people involved. I don't want anyone out there thinking that my friends knew about this in advance mm-hmm. and this is all just for ratings. Yeah. You know, someone's someone's life, Ariana's life has been completely upended mm-hmm. and she's going through so much pain and it's like not one person would agree to do this for ratings. No. Insane. It's a, it's a crazy theory. Yeah. So I wanted to clear that up because it was based on my story, which was something that she had been lying about and asking me to cover up for her. So I go into detail about that. Mm -hmm. And then another thing was I just made a very offhanded comment like, oh, now I know where you were for your, you know, three hours when you went missing. Okay, wait. (laughs) Yeah. So that part right there. I know you mentioned that on your podcast and my cousin Kelly hopped on for a second, but... What what did you mean missing for three hours? Because I completely forgot that this happened. I I was busy I getting ready too. to get married that day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we were all in your hotel room and we were getting ready. You were getting your hair done, your makeup done. We all were. Jared was there helping with like the rest of us do our makeup. And we had a certain time that we were all meeting in your hotel room, which we were in there for about three hours, I would mm-hmm. say. She did not show up. She didn't show up until we mo- had moved over to the bridal suite. So mm-hmm. Kelly brought that to my attention. She's like, oh, now, you know, she said she needed pool time or me time. But, you know, that's probably not what she was doing for that entire time. Yeah. And so Kelly and I were thinking about it. We're like, yeah, because we all had, you know, schedules of where to be. And if they were trying to figure out a time, you know, that they could have privacy, that would be the time because everybody was scheduled to be Hmm. in your room. Mm -hmm. And all she needed to say was, I need some alone time or me time. And that was the last of my concerns that day. I was, you know, just getting ready on time there with seven out of eight of my bridesmaids, you know, just who showed up when they were supposed Mm -hmm. to. But I guess it rubbed Kelly the wrong way. And she was just like, we all were there at a certain time. Why would you choose you know, when you're getting ready for your friend's wedding that you're right. in, why would you choose that for your me time? You're here on vacation. Like, pick another time, you know? <laughs> so it rubbed her the wrong way, so she remembered it. So then she brought it back up to me, and I was like, oh, my God, you're right. She wasn't there. There were a lot of people who have messaged me about things that rubbed them the wrong way at the wedding, things really? that they saw that no one thought anything of at the time. Yeah. But now people are going back they're picking apart a lot of situations and scenarios that looked a little sus at the time, but we all just shook it off and was like, no, we're all best friends, you know? Love is love. Well, you know, I think that's why it shook so, like, basically the world. Why it's shaking so many people, because this is one thing that you can't comprehend until it actually happens. So it's not on your radar that this is even a possibility. But now that the world has seen that, people are capable of doing this then they're just like wait then they start thinking about their own lives and their own friends and their own partners and they're just like rethinking everything because now this is a whole other level of possibility of betrayal that wasn't on anybody's radar for the most part yeah it's um it's been really tough just hearing everything seeing everything going back and thinking about everything and you will see a lot of this play out you know starting it started a little bit in this week's episode but I mean every episode for the rest of the season people should be watching with a very different lens and Mm -hmm. again nothing's getting re-edited obviously it's no secret we picked back up cameras last week so there will be additional content that'll be tapped on to the end of the up the season but everything else is what was actually happening behind our backs and in front of our faces and i gotta say yeah just it's mind fuck but okay switching gears a little before we switch gears okay can we talk about the elephant in the room? Which one? <laughs> There's several elephants, actually. It's very I, crowded in here. <laughs> I think we should leave the elephants in the room until, like, next month. Do you think you'll show up for the reunion? Yeah. Do you have say in if 
you're doing it from Zoom or in person? No. So do you not know yet? I mean, as far as I know, I'm fully intending on being there in person. I have no say over how this logistically works out. You know, if it's Zoom, you know, that we also have another COVID test that we have to do before the reunion. So um, that is not up to me whatsoever. I just want to make that very clear. Okay. Good to know. I want to know something else. What? Are you okay to discuss this a little bit? Or do you want to I move mean, on to a different topic? Um, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. I'm really curious how, I won't say her name, but how her family is allowing her to move forward with this when they know that you housed her, you took care of her, you were there for her, one of the only people to be there for her. What is going on with that? I would love to know. Yeah, right? I mean, have you met them? You've met her sister. Yeah. I've met her sister. Yeah. I still, up until we did Watch What Happens Live, her mom was texting me about how we should dress up like pumpkin pie and cotton candy and wear orange and pink and, like, make fun of the things we were called on the show this season. So, yeah, that's um, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, I would love to know their thoughts on this, or mm-hmm. you know, I guess we meant we may yeah we may never know. Yeah, no. Do you want to switch gears? You seem very yeah. Okay. I think let's let's lighten the mood okay. a little bit. I got so many questions when I asked, you know, what what else <laughs> should we discuss? <laughs> I did want to touch on this week's episode a little bit because it was hard to watch for multiple reasons but really watching Katie go through that it Mm -hmm. tugged on my heartstrings and made me just feel like a fucking asshole because I do remember what that was like so I definitely just wanted to get that out because that is something that since I watched the episode and then I watched it again it's just not sitting right with me Mm -hmm. um you know what else she also she also made it a big deal that Katie's mom came down on her really hard Right. And And then watching that, I'm like, of course, this was Terry's son-in-law for over a decade. Of course, that's going to hit her hard. This was her family. This is someone who spent 10 Christmases with them. So, yeah, watching this all back, like, Sheena, you could have done better. But I felt like so empowered in a, I'm not going to be a people pleaser anymore. I'm standing up for myself. I'm getting my confidence back. And I just felt like I, in return, needed to help Schwartz get his confidence back. And so watching it all back and seeing that I'm obviously in a very happy place in my life and planning a wedding, but someone's in a very sad place in their life going through a divorce, it, um, it, it my behavior doesn't sit right with me. And yeah for that I'm sorry and I will be saying I'm sorry again (laughs) next week at the reunion whether that is zoom or in person I don't know not up to me we shall see but um but yeah so uh, when I ask people for topics and questions a lot of people want to know about Summer's second birthday yes so uh, we had her second birthday party theme planned last year before her first birthday so our pl- party planners are amazing. Picnic and Pedal, I am obsessed with them. They do, they such, do a cute job. such a great job. And they thought for her first birthday party, we could do one time at summer camp. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I love that. However, her first birthday has to be rainbows. It mm-hmm. has to be rainbows. <laughs> so then they go, what about welcome to summer camp? Yes. And I loved that idea. So we are going all out summer camp theme. We're going to have, you know, the bounce house and the ball pit and all of that. But it's going to be campy. So I don't know if we're going to get like some teepees, do uh, like hot dogs and I don't know we're gonna just we can roast some vegan marshmallows yeah we could do that (laughs) we can do that was actually one of the questions that came in that I wanted to ask you because my kid doesn't seem to like meat and her dad is very 
you need to eat your protein, you know? Mm-hmm. But Vanderpump Robs wanted to know, what would you recommend as some vegan options for summer or for kids in general? Because I don't know if it's a texture thing, if it's a flavor thing, but any type of meat she doesn't want to eat. And I, I agree with Brock where he's like, look, until she understands what meat is and says, I don't want to eat animals, we will obviously support that. He's like, until then, I'm going to che- keep trying mm-hmm. to give my kid meat. And I'm like, Jamie will hate that. But I understand he wants to keep trying. So what would you recommend as some other options for protein for vegetarian kids? Sure. Well, real quick. Brock should read a book called Proteinaholic okay. by Dr. Garth Davis, who is on my podcast. Mm-hmm. And he is a surgeon, and he was a big meat eater. And at the age of 35, he went to go get life insurance because he was expecting his first child and found out he had fatty liver, among many other things. And his doctor friend was about to put him on all kinds of different medications. And he said, I'm a doctor myself. I know where this is headed. I need to search. I need to read all the studies and figure out how to eat the healthiest. And after reading hundreds, if not thousands of studies, he came to the conclusion that people who are the healthiest and live the longest do not get their protein from animals. Mm. So it's a great book. Mm -hmm. And I think I would recommend that to Brock or any man specifically who thinks they need animal protein for muscle gain or to be healthy because the studies actually suggest the opposite. Okay. But then as far as kids go, I admittedly am probably the worst person to ask because my own child has the (laughs) worst (laughs) diet in the world. So I make sure she gets protein shakes from plant-based protein. Okay. Right now, lately, we've been using a brand called Orgain Vanilla Flavor, and I actually just made her one this morning, and I just mixed it with almond milk, a banana, some frozen blueberries. Sometimes we'll do like a banana peanut butter flavor, but I give her that because that has all the greens actually in it as well and mm-hmm. vitamins in it and the, and enough protein. After that, it's the wheels fall off for the rest of the day. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> Summer actually, she likes smoothies. Yeah. So that is a good option because yeah. I, I swear, I don't texture, whatever it is, but she, like, will take a bite and she's like, Bleh. I'm like, mm. honey, she might not like me. You <laughs> might need to accept it. But he is not ready to accept it yet. I mean, kids, naturally, they don't want to eat animals. If you take a child to go play with a chicken, their instinct is not going to be, let me cut its head off right. and eat this. That, they're they're going to no, play with it and hug there's it. There's nothing normal about that. <laughs> I, 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 I fail you. <laughs> okay, still sticking on the food one, Laura Treneff wants to know, what are some fun things to do in Palm Springs, including restaurants? So my go-to is Las Casuelas, the one mm-hmm. on Palm Canyon Drive. They have a live band every night, Mexican food, so fun. Also, I was just talking to Heather McDonald at Ocean's Birthday, which I know there's some Ocean's Birthday questions we can get into, too. Mm-hmm. And at Ocean's Birthday, she was telling me that they're like building this house in Palm Desert right now. And she goes, have you been to The Nest? And I'm like, that yes. is my favorite place <laughs> in Palm Desert. Highly recommend. It's like old Hollywood, but mm. also like the, the dining part. It's like <laughs> old Hollywood, like kind of like Craig's, but then they have like the room where it's like the DJ and then they have like a live band and it's, it's just- so bizarre, it's so, but it works. Some, it, there's, a, okay, the bar that's attached is like a country bar feels like, okay? Yeah. It's like divey almost a little bit. And then the restaurant that's attached to it is kind of like what you said, not quite Craig's level, but sure, yeah. okay. But then there's that weird back room that feels like a an eighth grade school dance I or know, something right? with like a DJ like at the VFW hall. Yeah. It's so bizarre. The girl or the woman who owns it, I think her name is Dodie. Dodie. It's yeah. Dodie. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Heather McDonald just asked. She's yeah. like, do you know Dodie? And I'm yeah. like, I did meet her mm-hmm. and I remember now that that was her name because I'm like, wait, I've never met another Dodie. Yeah, you need to know Dodie to get in because there was Apparently. usually a line, remember? Yeah. And we were talking to her that night when we got in. Uh-huh. But it's a fun spot. But yeah. also the tiki bars. There's two. <gasps> That's right. Yeah, there's the the gay bar one. What's Do you remember the name of Wait, that? Wait, Toucans? Cans? Yes. Yeah, drag shows all the time. So much fun. Love Toucans. I think they even filmed an episode of the Kardashians there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a good one. And then there's a small hidden tiki bar. Do you remember we went? I forget who. I think it's we on were, Palm Canyon. It's like in a hotel or something. 
it's oh. connected to your top. We were so, I was so drunk. I don't know about you, but whoever we were with was breaking glasses by accident there. Oh my God. I do kind of remember that. <laughs> I forget the name of it though, but just look up Tiki Bars yeah. in Palm Springs and you'll okay. probably find it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Go wait, on. one more. If you're vegan. Yes. There's this awesome place. So the original owner of Native Foods, which is a chain most people will probably know of it, she left Native Foods and started her own like lunch deli type business out there called mm -hmm. Chef Tanya's Kitchen. It's in this like random industrial area. But every time I'm there, I stop and I get like a vegan Reuben or some sort of sandwich to take back with me. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Back to Ocean's birthday, because Mrs. Jenny D wants to know, O's B-Day party. We want the tea on Stassi and Brittany. I don't know what they spoke about, but I did see them speaking. Mm -hmm. So that's always a good sign, you know? I mean, I will say that at Ocean's birthday party, everyone there was good vibes, good energy. Everyone, as far as I saw, I mean, I personally said hi to every single person, had conversations with every single person, congratulated Stassi the second she walked in. I am so happy for her. I know this was something she was so ready for. So another congrats to her. Yes, congrats. But yeah, it's always good when you can come together and put shit aside for other people, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's coming together for Ariana right now, coming together for Ocean's birthday, but it's like the shit that we're going through in our individual lives personally and the drama and pettiness and all of that sometimes doesn't matter. You know, when there's yeah. a kid or a woman or someone who needs to be celebrated, we put our shit aside. I love that you can all do that. Yeah. So you were on my podcast this week, too, yeah. catching up with Sheena Shea. Amazing episode. Thank you. Yeah. And you did mention, though, that some people there didn't speak. And I wanted to ask you on my podcast, and I didn't get to. So who, if you can say, who didn't speak? I don't think Brittany and Katie ever talked. Okay. Yeah. And um, I don't know if she talked to Dana. I'm not sure. But I talked to everyone. I said hi to literally every person had that brief conversation with Katie asked her a little bit because I know she's on watch what happens live this week and I've been in touch with Dana we're in a group chat that's like our, our team Ariana group chat mm -hmm. and she had some very sweet words to give me at the birthday party and I've just been appreciative of everyone being so supportive right now mm -hmm because good for you all. we need that it's very mature yeah love it yeah all right some more questions there was a lot of stuff about summer other bravo shows are you watching other bravo shows right now have you watched summer house yeah. or jersey i'm watching summer house i'm loving jersey i did not see yeah. the most recent episode i don't think i have either i think i'm one behind same but i'm loving it and also, Schwartz is filming Winter House. I saw right the now. photos mm -hmm. of him. So it's in Colorado this year? Yeah, and it's not a lot of the same people. It's not Paige and Craig. It's not Austin, Sierra, not any of I them. I saw they brought some people from Below Deck. Below Deck, not Southern Charm. What's Family the new Karma? One? Yes, Family Karma. And then there's that new one. Oh, Southern Hospitality. They have oh, like three people from really? that show. Yeah. Okay. Which was surprising because I wasn't sure if they were going to get a, a season two. <laughs> I feel like maybe they give it another mm -hmm. shot. I know the ratings weren't good, but I mean, the concept has been proven to work with our show. You just have to have the right people to prove the concept. So, yeah, but I feel like what they're doing is trying to copy or recreate something. Hey, you said you it, know? not me. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't always translate. Yeah, no, I agree. You have to have the right people. And that's why I think our show has been so successful is because we were a group of pre-existing friends who already had drama and all of this. And not only that, like I show. think some of them are pre-existing friends. Yeah. But I feel like they are trying too hard to recreate something that they've seen already work mm -hmm. where they should just do their own thing. Yeah. Create, create your own thing. You know, be yourself. Don't try to be Vanderpump Rules number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. All right. Speaking of reality TV, Christina 040209, how did you get connected with the Big Brother season 23 cast? So I met Hannah and Taylor at 
Well, I think they were on different seasons. I don't know, 22, 23, whatever. I met them at a movie premiere, and Hannah has been a long time Vanderpump Rules fan. Oh. Since she was like 12 or 13, she had a photo with me, Jamie, when I think I'm in like the pink Sir dress, like circa wow. season two or three. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, you are a baby. And yeah, we just hit it off and became friends, and I want to get them on the podcast soon. I know so many people who want to get on the Big Brother show. I don't get and it. Can you explain it to me? It's it's not for me. I've had people ask, like, oh, would you do Celebrity Big Brother? And I'm like, I mean, I guess, but it wouldn't be my top show to choose to be on because yeah. it's a lot of, <laughs> you would probably be good at it. But for <laughs> me, a lot of laying in you bed. Gotta, no, you got to use your brain too much. And oh, the, really? the challenges and like oh. the manipulation and all of that. I think if anything, Hannah Chata's game night that I was just at a couple weeks ago, we did a murder mystery game mm -hmm. night. I was terrible. The first guy who I was like, you're the killer. I want you out only because he kicked me out of the game of musical chairs. He actually was the killer. Oh, wow. And I should have stuck with that initial instinct. But then I let people get in my ear and they're like, oh, no, we think it's this person. I'm like, oh, you're right. I'm like, I would be terrible at this game. Don't don't recommend me for Big Brother because I don't think I would be good. Yeah, I, I don't like lying to people. I'm too honest. So I felt like I was playing I an realize, honest game. I didn't realize you had to do that. Yeah, you got to lie, deceive. It's it's not for me. Oh. Yeah. So um what, what's more your style? Survivor? No, right? That's Brock's well, That was thing. another question. Yeah, that's Big why. Brother or Survivor? No, there, that is definitely more Brock. If I had to choose between the two, Big Brother, for sure. You're not going to put me on an island. I, would, I, I wouldn't be able to, like, go stab a fish. Yeah. <laughs> like, what would I eat? There's no, like, right. I'd have to, like, find a way to open coconuts or something. Yeah. No. Um, I don't know what other oh, I know. show I would do. I would love to do The Amazing Race with you. Because we could go around the world. See, that would talk be fun. Our way into or out of things. But you still have to eat weird things. I, Any challenge that requires eating weird food mm -hmm. or being submerged in water, uh-uh. I'm out. Well, here's the thing. We get on, and then you do we those tell challenges. Them, well, I can't. There's, I eat less than you. But we would say, hey, it's discrimination if you're making a vegan eat these things. So you, you mm. can't. You've got to change the rules. They're this like season. no vegans allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were vegans a couple seasons ago, and they made them skin a goat. And oh they, no, they walked I wouldn't off. even. I'm not a vegan. I wouldn't even well, do I think that. That's no disgusting. That way. Amazing Race and CBS. You're even asking people to do that. I yeah. think that's gross. Leave yeah. the animals alone. Totally. All right, more summer stuff. I mean, I could do a whole podcast about summer because she's the best. But this is a good one. Nikki Alvarez, 2016. How do you keep your mental health in check during these crazy days? Therapy. <laughs> How often are you going? I go every other week. Same. Yeah, so I've been doing that since June, I think I started in last year. And my therapist is amazing right when we were What's getting that like <laughs> I <hate> mine. <laughs> well I was on a wait list for like four months I refused to start therapy until I got this therapist yeah and she's amazing I cycle through them yeah so <laughs> I got very lucky it was worth the wait but every time we want to start EMDR for past trauma going back to my 12 year old self the bullying me choking as a kid, stuff with my postpartum OCD, just things that we really want to dive deep and do that EMDR. Something else comes up that mm. I need the talk therapy for, and I've not been able to get to the EMDR yet. So maybe next session, but I realized that I had scheduled my next session for March 23rd, which we all know we are now shooting the right. reunion. Ugh. So last week she was like, all right, I'll see you on the 23rd. And I was like, wait. No, because I book out for like five months at a time. I just go every other week. It's on my calendar. Right. And at the time when I made my schedule for therapy, I didn't know the date of the reunion. Mm -hmm. 
So I... You'll need it directly after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she said she'll let me know if she has any cancellations, but I really want to get into EMDR. So I thought you tried it that one time and you weren't a fan. Because it was the wrong things we were trying to get, like okay. the triggers. Like I felt like it was all fears around being a mom and summer choking and her eating food because it went back to when I was six or seven and I choked. And so as we're trying to go through it, I'm like,